Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about stomach cancer. Have you ever noticed a bolting in your abdomen or have vomited blood before? Stomach cancer is a cancer that starts everywhere in the stomach and the stomach wall. It's called gastric cancer. If you have stomach cancer or close to someone who does, knowing what to expect can help you cope. In this video, we will explain everything related to gastric cancer, its symptoms, its cause, and how to diagnose and treat it. Our role today is to answer most of the questions regarding stomach cancer. Today we have Dr. Kim, who is a leading doctor at Sun Chun Hang University Hospital. He is going to discuss with us everything about stomach cancer from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, I'm Queenie, and before we start, please subscribe to our channel so next time you will be updated with our new releases. How often should somebody undergo colonoscopy? Well, it differs from race to race. Korea, Japan, China are the countries with the highest incidence of gastric cancer in the world. Therefore, here in Korea, it is recommended to have gastroscopy once every two years for patients over the age of 40. However, in other Western countries like Russia or Eastern Europe, the incidence of gastric cancer is not as high as in Korea. So it is recommended to have gastroscopy once every three to five years after the age of 40 to 50. On the other hand, colonoscopy is required for early detection of colorectal cancer. So for colorectal cancer, it is recommended to have a colonoscopy every three to five years for adults over the age of 45 or 50. Are there any early signs for this kind of cancer? Mm. Well, in fact, gastric cancer is not as easy to detect early on. So that's the reason why we recommend getting gastroscopy regularly. The stomach is shaped like this, and even if a small cancer lesion develops in the stomach, it is difficult to find any symptoms. When gastric cancer grows in size, it can cause indigestion as it occupies a corner of the stomach, or it can cause black stools due to bleeding. Also vomiting, weight loss, and other such symptoms may occur. In fact, if such symptoms happen to occur, it would mean that the cancer has already progressed from early gastric cancer to advanced gastric cancer. So for a patient who has this kind of cancer, is it better to go for surgery or to another kind of treatment? Fundamental treatment for gastric cancer, surgery. Surgery is the answer, and it is a question of whether to add chemotherapy after surgery or not, or whether to do an endoscope, laparoscopic, or open surgery. But still, the fundamental treatment of gastric cancer will be surgery. So who is more likely to have uh, stomach cancer? To answer that question, we need to understand the risk factors for gastric cancer. First of all, heliobacter infection in Korea, especially in the past, due to the habit of sharing food with each other, heliobacter pylori infections are prevalent even to this day. So if you happen to be infected with helicobacter pylori and it's not treated, it may become a risk factor for stomach cancer later on. In addition, chronic atrophic gastris, eating a lot of salty foods, and etc., all this can increase the incidence of stomach cancer. And smoking has also shown to increase the risk of stomach cancer. How about family history? Among all gastric cancer incidences, about 80 to 85 percent of it is just sporadic, in other words, acquired. And about 15 percent can be considered to be familial. So after the surgery, is there any restrictions regarding the diet or the lifestyle? Gastric cancer surgery typically involves resecting about two-thirds of the stomach, or the entire stomach. Then there may be cases with only about a third of the stomach remaining, or more, or none at all. In such cases, the stomach would not be able to function properly. The function of the stomach to store food, break it down, and make it easy to digest. Because such functions are lost. Patients have to do most of it by mouth after surgery. Chewing thoroughly and eating for a long time, eating slowly, eating in small amounts, eating more often. Such changes in eating habits will take place. And, as I mentioned before, it would be more beneficial to avoid certain spicy or salty foods 
that can cause stomach cancer. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Ah, Thank you. Today, we learned many things about this common cancer, and the doctor explained in details everything related to stomach cancer. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and respond to you as soon as possible.